Every day, people accept government job offers because it offers them that job security, the work-life balance, a pension. But the question is, what do you need to know in order to get a government job this year? The first thing is to find a job series. What would you like to do for the government? There's over 300 jobs in the federal government. You can learn about them by going to the OPM Job Series Handbook. You can Google it. I'll leave a link in the description. You can check it out. Scroll through there. Do Control F. Type in keywords. Find out how your experience lines up with different government jobs. You can also go on usajobs.gov to the far right. Scroll down. Look at Job Series. Go through that list and see what your education and experience lines up with. Outside of that, I would talk to somebody. Talk to somebody who's in the federal government, a government employee. Maybe you know somebody on Facebook you can reach out to, maybe on LinkedIn. You don't even need to know the person on LinkedIn. You could search through their filters and find somebody who works at a federal agency that might be willing to talk to you. That's a good way to figure out what your background is compatible with, that lines up with when it comes to a government job. Next thing to do is to build or to change your resume. This is the most important part of a federal government job. This is your ticket to the dance. You don't have the ticket, you don't go to the dance. You can't come in. So how do you get this right? Well, the first thing to understand is nothing can be assumed. So a federal resume is gonna be a lot more detailed than a private sector resume. And you wanna make sure that you're putting in the keywords, the words from the job announcement, the words from the job series that shows you are not only eligible, but you're qualified for the job. I would build your federal resume first around the job series. So if you're targeting, let's say 0301, great. Let's build that resume around that job series. That job series, they have certain verbs, certain words that describe it, that describe what a person does in that capacity. And that is how you're writing your resume. The next thing is to remove anything not relevant to the job. So if you have on there, that you were a waitress at the local town diner, that might not be relevant when you're trying to get an instructor position or when you're trying to get a data analyst position. It might not be relevant, so you have to remove that. Otherwise, you're just, when you do not remove that information, you are essentially creating a barrier or an obstacle so that HR has to navigate through there in order to find your relevant information. So don't do that. When you are applying to these job announcements, you have to tailor the resume to the job announcement. So when it comes to that specialized experience paragraph, that is a gold mine. You will go into that gold mine and you will extract gold. And gold are the keywords that are listed in the specialized experience. So if it says they want somebody who has advised or who has evaluated, you will use that exact word to describe the achievements and your experience within your resume. If you are still trying to get a federal government job, I would advise to attend some of these virtual hiring events. There's, there's nothing to be lost in everything to be gained by going to a virtual hiring event. You could meet a hiring manager. You could meet somebody that's a human resource specialist. That type of relationship could benefit you when it comes to getting a government job. If you want me to email you a list every week of the virtual hiring events taking place in the government, sign up to the free newsletter down below. Next thing is to set filters. You need to set filters in usajobs.gov. That's how you're able to get rid of the noise. You cut through the noise and you go straight to the heart of what you're trying to get, your objective, your federal government job. This is done by making sure you have the GS grade. What is your salary expectation? Are you willing to work for 100000 Do you need at least 115000 or you won't even consider it? Put that in the filter. Same thing with location. Where are you located? Where are you willing to look? By default, the location is a 30 mile radius, but you can increase it, you can decrease it, whatever you wanna do. Same thing with telework, remote work. Are you only looking for 100% remote work? Is that the only possibility? It's gonna be a lot more competitive if it is, but if it is, there's a filter you can click in there. And we have the same thing for clearances. Sometimes clearances scare people when it comes to secret or top secret clearances. It definitely extends the federal hiring process. If you don't want to deal with a top secret clearance, that's fine. Most government jobs, they don't require a top secret. They don't even require a secret. You can click the box on the filter 
and those jobs won't even show up for you. Do that. Next is to apply three to four times a day and forget it. If you have a solid resume, let's say you have a strong resume and you're committed to applying every day, there's a 90% chance you will be successful. The key is you only apply to the jobs you're actually qualified for. You don't apply for everything, right? So this takes reading the job announcement and it takes a little bit more time. A lot of people aren't willing to commit and invest the time into doing that. Now, this means that you're going to be applying 20, 30 times a week. Throughout applying, you will get eligibility emails and referral emails. The thing about this is none of it matters. That's all, that's all noise as well. The only thing that matters is when you get invited to an interview. So you can smile, nod your head, and be happy when the referrals come in. That's fine. Referrals are important. They kind of tell you you're on the right track with your resume. It's a good indicator. But I wouldn't do a dance. I wouldn't get too happy until you have to interview, until they give you the email that you have to interview. Do not get too emotionally attached to your job applications, to your referrals. You might have, let's say for example, there's a chief of staff position in the Department of Homeland Security and they referred you and you know people that work there. You're getting super excited. As soon as the rejection email comes in or the non-select or maybe they ghost you completely, that takes an impact emotionally. You start to feel you start to feel negative about yourself. You kind of feel a little bit a little bit more hopeless. You don't need that in your life. Apply to these jobs and forget these jobs. Move on to the next one. Even when you get a job offer, accept the tentative job offer, move on to the next one, keep applying. Next is to track your applications. The goal here is a 50% referral rate. That's the ultimate goal. When it comes to applying for jobs, you apply 100 times. Ideally, you would want at least 50 of those applications to be referred to the hiring manager. So you would use Microsoft Excel, a Notion format in order to track it. So what happens if you're not getting 50? Let's say you're getting 30% or 25%. That's not good. It means one or two things. First thing, stop applying to jobs you know you're not eligible or qualified for. That's the first thing. The second thing is you have to revise your resume. You have to tweak it, make it a little bit stronger so that it could be more competitive when you're applying to these jobs. Next is the interview. Take all interviews. Doesn't matter if you really want to do it or if you already have a job offer, take the interview because the interview is giving you experience. The interview is giving you a potential, an option, even if it's not your first choice. It's making you better and is putting more options on the table. When it comes to preparing, you need to know about the agency before you get into the room, before you dial up on the call. You need to know their mission statement, their vision statement. You kind of have to take that information. You have to weave it into your own experience so that you're speaking the same language as the agency. You don't have to do this, but for the best results, I would do this. Next thing is success stories. Create your success stories. These are behavioral situational questions they will be asking you. And for you to give the best possible answer, it should be in a format such as STAR, Situation, Task, Action, Result, or CAR, Context, Action, Result. It needs to be in a format. It needs to be a success story that you can throw over at them. That's how you're going to present your value in the best possible way. Next is the tentative job offer. You can and should accept multiple tentative job offers, okay? Because things can fall through, background check, maybe the agency loses funding, whatever the case. Accept multiple tentative job offers if you're put into that position. The most important thing here, you need to negotiate your step level. Between step one and step 10, we're talking about twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a year that people just walk away and they're like, you know what? I don't wanna cost a fuss. I don't wanna cost too much drama. I just wanna take my job. And people do that. More often than not, people do that. But then you have other people that are like, you know what? I was making way more money in the private sector. I'm gonna to try to get step 10. And sometimes they get step 10. People get step 10 every day in the federal government. It doesn't have to be step 10, step five would be fine, right? Negotiate now because once you're in the federal government, you lose that. You are no longer allowed to negotiate. Next is the final job offer. The final job offer should have your GS grade and your step level in it. You want to make sure that everything is 100% accurate. It'll also have your service. So competitive service, accepted service. At the last minute, sometimes people have seen that switch around. So pay attention to it. Look through everything. You'll also get your EOD 
right? Your entry on duty date. This is something that's negotiable. They want you to come in in two weeks. You're like, hey, I got some other commitments going on. I'd like to come in in three weeks, three and a half weeks. You can talk to them. You can adjust this date. Once you show up, you will go through an onboarding procedure. This thing can last three, four days. Sometimes it's one or two days. Basically, you're going to get a slide deck and they're just going to push out so much information about the agency. This is about us. This is what we do. And you're going to have to sit there. Most of the time, it's mandatory. After that, you'll be able to sit down with your supervisor, discuss expectations, and move about your day. Now, if you want a federal government job, I'm going to give you five ways I can help you get there. The first one is playlist. YouTube videos on this channel. There's so many of them that go into more detail when it comes to resume building or when it comes to different type of jobs or different type of hiring paths. Look through the videos, spend a little bit of time, look through there and pull the information that applies to you in your situation. The next thing is the newsletter. Every week, if you want insights, if you want to know current events when it comes to federal government job, sign up to the free newsletter down below. It also has free virtual hiring events that usually take place at least a few times each and every week. The next way is federal resume templates. If you look at the link in the description below, I have resumes that I spent the time to construct in a competitive format. I have one for the 0343 for the program analyst. I have one for the 2210 for the IT folks. I have one for the 0500 for the finance folks. If you want an idea on what a competitive resume that actually gets results, how that looks like, then go visit that link and check out those resume templates. Another way is you can call me directly. There's a coaching call option in the link below. And finally, we have a course. So the course will take you step by step on how to construct the most competitive resume that you can construct. And at the end of it, I will sit down, review your entire resume, make edits, make suggestions, make comments, and we will work together to get that resume as strong as we possibly can. That link is in the description as well. Okay, if you have more questions about federal government jobs, I did a live stream recently, answered over a dozen questions on usajobs.gov, on the federal hiring process, on different government jobs. A lot of these questions, they could be on your mind. If you're interested in that, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.